What you guys got another video should you switch to Linux now Windows has had some major changes and there's more coming and it's going in a direction where a lot of people don't particularly like uh, where Microsoft are taking Windows 11 or even future operating systems from Microsoft so should you switch to Linux and is Linux right for you so I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of Linux, and these are just my opinions. Of course, everyone has an opinion. Some people will just tell you that Linux is way better. Of course, what you've got to do is look at the pros and cons and then work out whether Linux is right for you. So first, let's start off with, so Linux is free and open source, which means you can install it on your computer for free and run it. And a lot of the software that you get on Linux is also free as well. And also, Linux is able to run on different types of hardware. Whether it will be old or new, you should have no problems running Linux on that system. You may have the odd issue with some hardware, but in general, Linux will work with any sort of hardware configuration, so you should be having no issues there. Now, another question I see a lot of is which distro is the best? There is no real best distro to use. The simple answer for that is... It's your personal preference or whatever you prefer, whether it be Pop OS, Mint, Zorin OS, or any of the other many different distro flavors out there that you can use. It's unlike any other operating system, say like Windows, which just has Windows 10 or Windows 11. You know, Linux has many different flavors and you can choose which one suits your needs. At the end of the day, well, Linux is a completely different operating system to Windows, so you are going to have to adapt a little bit uh, to that operating system which moves me on to the next question is should you dual boot linux or should you install it on a virtual machine or on an old computer and practice to see whether you like it or not now you can try loads of different distros without having to install them on the computer and then you can pick your favorite one and then plan the install to install it on your main system i would say i would not dual boot uh, linux with your main system of Windows because obviously things can go wrong and it's always best to test these things out in a virtual environment like virtual machine like VirtualBox or VMware you can use any of those and give these a test you can even boot to a USB flash drive with Linux on it and try it out and see whether you like it so in my personal opinion I would not dual boot until you are more advanced and understand uh, how Linux works again if you're moving to Linux you may as well leave Windows behind and completely embrace Linux altogether. And that's what it's all about. If you're going to keep going backwards and forwards, you're never really going to learn anything. And what is the point of trying Linux out in the first place if you're going to keep jumping back onto Windows? If you are planning on doing that, then maybe Linux isn't for you in the first place if you're looking at keep going backwards and forwards. So next up, uh, we're going to be talking about claiming back your privacy and freedom. By switching to Linux, you're not going to have to deal with things like Copilot, debloating the system all the time, uh, false Microsoft accounts, uh, BitLocker, or any data harvesting or collection of your personal private information, or even uh, Recall, which is a new feature of Windows, which is going to take snapshots every three seconds. All that will be just a thing of the past when you switch to Linux. That's not to say that you're not going to have some form of data harvesting when you go on sites like YouTube, and Google and things like that. It's just another form of data collection, but we're talking about Windows here in general. So next up, we're talking about which distro should you choose. I personally would say start off with Pop OS or Mint or Zorin OS or something like that if you want my personal opinion. One of those should be perfectly fine to get started with. This is Zorin OS who you're looking at right here. It's got a Windows feel to it, although it's not Windows at all, it's Linux. But it does work really well and it's easy to use and it's not as difficult as a lot of people make out. So that's something that I would go for, something like Zorin OS or Mint or something like that. One thing I will say is embrace Linux for what it is. It's a completely different operating system and start to learn some of the basic commands in case you're going to need them. And also don't keep flipping between Windows and Linux because at the end of the day, choose one and use it. If you are going to choose Linux and try to move away from Windows, then you need to embrace it, like I've said. And the reason why I say that is because if you don't, you're going to keep going backwards and forwards. And then you have to ask yourself the question, what was the point in switching in the first place? Because that means you're not avoiding 
the telemetry or anything like that. If you need it to play a game or something like that, then of course, you that means Linux is not for you. Now, if you're one of these people that telemetry and privacy is not a big issue uh, and you want to use Linux and Windows at the same time, by all means, do so. But if you're one of these people that are trying to move away from Windows for whatever reason and try to take on Linux as a new challenge and a new operating system, then don't keep flipping from one to the other because it's pointless. OK, so let's quickly talk about what you need to know about Linux and some of the things that might turn you off of Linux. So if you have an application or software that is proprietary to Windows and it won't work on Linux and you must use that software, then Linux is simply not for you. Yes, you can try to use that software with Linux's wine or bottles to try and get those programs to work properly on Linux. But again, it's a bit of a faff and I would just say it's probably not going to be best to switch to Linux if that's the case. Moving on to point number two, if you have a game that is proprietary to Windows and doesn't work on Linux for whatever reason, whether it will be the anti-cheat or whatever it is that doesn't function properly on Linux and you can't get that game to work on Linux, then Linux is simply not for you. Yes, Linux has made massive advancements in gaming and a lot of games do run on Linux, but Windows still has it beat for gaming. And unfortunately, uh, there is some games that just don't work on Linux and if that is the case and you do play a lot of games then Linux is simply not going to work for you and you are going to end up dual booting and going back into Windows to play your games and then back into Linux and you have to ask yourself the question if you're moving away from Windows because of all the privacy and telemetry then why are you keep going back to play games that simply defeating the purpose of switching to Linux in the first place in my opinion. Next up, let's talk about hardware or hardware peripherals or some sort of hardware that you need to run and it doesn't run on Linux, but it runs on Windows. It might be a printer or something like that that just don't work on Linux and you need to run that on the system uh, and it just won't work. If that is the case, then it's not going to work out for you on Linux, unfortunately. So you need to make sure and you check that everything is going to work correctly on Linux before you completely make the switch and invest a lot of time and effort into installing Linux and find out that some of the stuff that you need running doesn't work. It's important that you check everything to make sure that Linux does everything you need it to do in replace of Windows. And if it does, then you're pretty much good to go. Other than that, we're moving on to the next one is if you or your company uses complex macros or scripts on Windows, these may simply not work on Linux and you need to check to see whether they are going to run and work on Linux. Unfortunately, if you need these macros or scripts and you want to use Linux, it's not going to work out and you're not going to be able to use any of those uh, macros or scripts that you've been using on your computers on Windows. Now, moving on to the next one, regardless of what people tell you, you're going to need to learn a new operating system and also, you're going to need to learn some commands. Now, Linux doesn't need to have commands run on it all the time, but there is going to be some time where you're going to need to use the odd command here and there. And it's important that you learn some of these. Just like in Windows, you have a few commands that you might need to learn in command prompt uh, to do certain things. You're going to need to do that in Linux as well. So you're going to need to sit back and learn how Linux works. It's completely different to Windows. Some people can pick it up very quickly and some people are just stuck in Windows for so long that they find Linux very, very difficult. So if you're one of those, then maybe Linux is not for you. Now, comments you might be reading on YouTube videos is about Linux and how stable it is. Yes, it's a stable OS, but it's far from having its own problems or bugs like any other OS. It does have bugs and issues just like any uh, other operating system. So no operating system is 100% problem free. Bear that in mind as well. But that being said, if you are sick and tired of Microsoft's privacy issues, updates and AI and false policies like Microsoft accounts, then give Linux a try. It's pretty easy to use and take back your privacy and freedom by switching to Linux and giving it a go. Now, it's super important that if you are just going to bite the bullet and install Linux onto your system without trying it first on a virtual machine 
or on a dual boot or whatever it is you're going to use, then it's important that you back up all of your data first because if you are going to install Linux, it is going to wipe the drive clean. That goes without saying. So let me know in the comment section below whether you're making the transition to Linux or whether you're thinking about it or whether you have already and how long you've been on Linux and what distro you chose. I'll be interested to read your comments. Anyway, with that said, keep it nice and civil in the comments section below, please. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I know she'll catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.